What's going on? What's up, girls? I have a cabbage for them, so they're being really impatient right now. All right, guys, good morning. So I am out doing some chicken chores this morning, and I wanted to show you some of the winterizing that we've done on the coop so far. This is my first year with the girls, so it's been a whole new experience. I currently have solar plastic here wrapped on the west and the north side. I don't have the east side or the south side wrapped because our east side is blocked mostly by the house. And if we have weather coming, I've been putting a tarp on my south side because we have a lot of wind here in Kansas. So we can get a lot of just rain going into the coop from the south area. But when I tarp it, we don't have that problem. But I wanted to keep some of it not wrapped for airflow just to keep everything fresh and smelling good. Also, they get more fresh air and everything. But we have solar plastic up currently. And I honestly, I'm not the biggest fan. We had a really, really windy day. Um, was it last week? And I had to come out twice with my staple gun because the plastic just came completely off the bottom and it was just whipping and it was literally scaring the girls so bad. They were jumping, they were all hurtled together and I felt so bad. So my husband actually had the thought, we have these aluminum like roof panels on the top of the coop here. They have clear plastic ones that we think would work really well to wrap this side here and also the north i wanted to wrap the west and the north just because we have a lot of weather that comes in this way and i don't want to have snow or rain get the run area wet and stay wet i do have sand and the sand i really like so i've had the sand the whole time in the coop and if it does get wet it actually dries really fast so i do enjoy that one thing you guys have been asking me a lot though is how i've been keeping their water from freezing so it did freeze a handful of days and it was quite annoying i had to come out here with boiling or just like really hot water and make sure that the little like nipple area that they like poke at to drink um wasn't frozen but then my husband found a bird bath heater water for winter time and it can be submerged in water and i haven't had a single problem since and i've not seen a single person um, even mention this when it comes to chicken keeping and I really really like it so uh, let me show you that okay I have you propped up and I honestly don't know if they're going to leave this alone so I might not be able to but let me uh, do this fast here this is the little bird bath little heater it's actually kind of a little warm to the touch but I actually need to clean out their water so the only thing I don't like about this is obviously there's a cord and their lid doesn't fit perfectly and then the wind so I have to keep a brick on it to make sure it doesn't fall off because this also flew off and it scared the girls so it's been a learning curve um, but keeping it cracked like this makes their water a little dirtier so I do have to make sure I'm cleaning this out once a week when in the summertime it stayed really really clean all right beep beep move it girly I'm also going to go ahead and get their coop clean while I'm out here. I typically do this Thursday, Friday, but we have a lot of rain in the forecast the next two days. So I'm trying to avoid that. Man, I have a girl who just is not laying in the boxes. That's kind of annoying. Um, I do get questions often though on how do I not get poopy eggs and it's I have these roll down nest boxes which I really like I did get these new little nesting pads though and the eggs don't roll down as easily um but you guys I do get an occasional poopy egg it's not uncommon but making sure you have a clean coop makes all the difference these eggs are super clean here did everyone lay in the same nest box today five six yeah everyone laid in the same box today Minus the one girl. How are you? But the last 
thing I do when cleaning their coop is I sprinkle a little bit of this for Saturday Lime here. I'm actually gonna go through their entire run as well. This stuff is great for keeping any type of smell down. Honestly, these girls aren't that smelly because I clean their coop often, but it also helps repel lice, mites, ticks. So this time of year when there's a lot of like leaves dropping and stuff like that, I figured this would be really great. I've been using this all year, um, especially during like peak summer when it was super, super hot. Um, obviously things just get a little bit more smelly in the summer when it's that hot. This stuff worked absolutely amazing. So I like to go around the whole edge of the coop and then I'll also sprinkle it inside um, with their sand because they also like to dust bathe in this. They get really excited about it. This cup sucks. <laughs> I haven't had one that just kept flimsing out on me. I'm trying a new bread recipe today. This is just a quick artisan loaf that I did last night. It's a no need type of deal. So we'll see how it goes. I was interested in it. I do have sourdough here. I am currently reactivating my starter. It's actually looking really good. I do need to feed this today, but I've had it in my fridge for the last six months. I go in and out of making sourdough and I tend to lose interest in it during summer when I have a ton of canning going on. I have a ton of stuff in the garden going on. I just tend to just stop. Um, so I really need to get into a better schedule with sourdough over the winter. So I really want to play around with this. Oh my gosh, it smells absolutely amazing. But yeah, this is just a quick like instant yeast loaf that I started last night. It stays on your counter for overnight into the morning. So that's really interesting. While I do this, I'm actually going to try to make my own butter today. I'm really, really excited about this. The only time I've ever made butter before, I think was in preschool with like a mason jar that we shook forever. Um, but yeah, you just need whipping cream. I'm going to do it um, in my KitchenAid. I was really interested. I've seen a few videos on how easy it could be to make butter just from whipping cream in your KitchenAid. So I figured might as well today I'll have butter and bread. coffee going if you guys have any tips on how to clean something like this please let me know I cannot get this thing clean to save my life and I think it's permanently stained um, if you have any tips please let me know in the comments below I really struggle uh, keeping this thing looking decent it's absolutely terrible a few minutes into whipping the cream it'll turn into whipped cream and I want to top my coffee with the whipped cream because I mean honestly what is better than good whipped cream. I honestly don't know. I have a bowl and a cheesecloth here. I'm going to pour 
the butter and buttermilk through the cheesecloth and I'm going to squeeze out as much liquid as I possibly can. Now I'm just pouring about a cup, cup and a half of really cold water to rinse off the butter and this is going to get any more of the buttermilk out. This just allows everything to be a little bit more shelf stable because the more milk you keep in the butter, the less it's going to store for a long time. All right, see how this water is milky and cloudy? We are going to dump this and repeat that process. If you've never seen one of these bread slicers before, they are absolutely amazing, especially for sourdough or really big loaves. I'm able to really cut a lot straighter with this than I am like a traditional serrated knife. Mmm, that is delicious. That would be even better if I sprinkle a little bit of salt on top. Yeah. Oh my god. That is so freaking good. Last week I finished my crochet blanket, which was my very first crochet project. And I have like five or six skeins of this yarn left. So I am actually going to attempt to make my first crochet beanie tonight. Everyone says this should take 30 minutes to an hour, but I'm slow, so I'm sure this might take me some time. I'm attempting, I'm attempting to also learn a new stitch while I do this, okay? Pretty sure I did it. At the end of the row, chain one and turn. And now for rows three and on, we'll just repeat row two. So half double crochet in the back loop only in each stitch across and chain one and turn at the end of the row. Well, something that took someone 30 minutes took me uh, a little over two hours, but I absolutely love it. I think it's actually super, super cute. I just really love the pattern of this yarn. This is Hudson Bay um, Lions brand, and it's just super cool. It looks so much different. Well, I mean, it looks the same as my blanket. Here's the blanket but I did a whole different stitch today and with it being smaller and not so lengthy, I feel like you get a lot more color in the hat. But either way, this was super uh, fun. It was easy, but it was actually kind of hard at the same time just because I did a different stitch. But this was super fun. Um, I will definitely try um, getting my hand at getting this a lot faster, but two hours isn't bad for uh, my first beanie. What do you guys think? Either way, guys, I think I'm going to conclude today's video here. Thanks for hanging out with me today, and I will see you guys all next week. Bye!